Welcome back. We got tour views today on Milwaukee. We got the drills, we got grinders, we got the small screw gun, 3 8 impact, we got the old high torque half inch, we got the new high torque half inch sitting on high output XC80. So you know, let's put a little bit of money into some Milwaukee tools. We got three of these grease guns. But this is actually what we're going to review today, and it has pretty minimal amount to do with the tool itself, but more so to do with their service department. So, lock you up here. I bought this grease gun quite a while ago, less than five years ago, so it's still under warranty. And within about the first week, maybe two maybe two weeks of having it, this thing split. It split that aluminum case right there from freaking hole to hole. Busted it right open, it blew grease right out of it. And I said, well, holy cow, maybe it's a bad casting or something. I took it right back to the store where I bought it, which you don't, you're not supposed to do, but they took it back. You know, the family farm and home, they worked with me. They took it back right away. They said, holy cow, you just bought this thing. There's no way that should have happened on a brand new grease gun. You know, I told them I was like, I got my second tube of grease ever put in it. So they took it back. They exchanged it out for me. They were great. And probably about a year after that, it happened again. Same exact spot right there. It just cracks the housing from hole to hole and dumps grease out of it. And I was like, all right, full of crap. So that time I had to send it to Milwaukee. Move these. So the first time I sent it out was 622-23. Right there is the service number, the SV5290967. And that time they fixed it and they sent it right back to me. No problem. So, all right, sweet. So, you know, I... Tuck that thing away down there in its case where it spends its entire life because I have two other ones. This is kind of one that it lives in the bottom drawer of the toolbox. So I, it didn't get used much. And when, we, when I did finally get it out and I started using it again, it wasn't but maybe four or five tubes of grease in it was leaking around the hose. I thought, okay, bad O-ring, loose hose, whatever, pull the hose off, O-ring's intact, but it took all the threads out of the, the hole there where the hose thread's in. And I go, well, what the hell? I take this, I package it all back up, I send it back to Milwaukee again, right here in 1028-24, service number SV7016264. So they get the tool and pretty much within about a week I get an email saying the warranty was denied on it. And this thing's clean for, I mean, for a grease gun, you, you figure something can, in this industry gets beat on pretty hard and they get left dirty, greasy, nasty. I've always tried to take care of the ones that I keep aside for myself so it's and it's not damaged anywhere either it's not like I've been beating on this thing with a hammer or anything like that so I sent it I bailed it back to him again I say you know hey they denied the warranty I called and they said that the screws were stripped out and that's why the warranty was denied I said the screws the screws. I said, you guys put the stinking gear case in there. I said, you put that aluminum cover on there the first time it went out. And I gave them that other service number, or the RO number, whatever they want to call it. And they said, well, that has nothing to do with why it's here this time. I said, how? It's the same part, this part right here that you guys already replaced once. And it's back again. I don't, you know, like, how is that not related? And she said, well, I, I don't know. I don't work for the service department. I only work for customer service. I said, okay, well, transfer me to the service department. They can't. They won't. Their service department does not take phone calls, period, point blank. You cannot call their service center. 
you can only reach them by email. And at some point, I'm going to try to figure out how to edit it just off my phone to get these emails that I have to show up in this video. And so when I emailed their service department, they said that it was not covered or the warranty was denied and will stand denied because the gear case was stripped. And I said, well, that, you know, that doesn't really answer my question because my initial question was, how is this not workmanship or material defect related? The only thing I did to this was I unscrewed it to see why it was leaking. I should be able to do that with my tool. If it's just an O-ring, I could throw an O-ring on there, no big deal. Just so you see there is an O-ring in there. It, you know, it shouldn't be a big deal to replace an O-ring in my own tool on a hose at that. And then, uh, so I emailed them back again. I said, well, that doesn't really answer my question. Could you please elaborate why the warranty was denied and how this was figured to be non-workmanship related or non-material defect related when they were the ones who replaced this gear housing in the first place? So I have, I've sent that email on repeat pretty consistently. I don't, again, I'm going to bring them all up on here. At least I'm going to try to chart them out show you exactly when they were sent but they it's almost like they have a robot answering for them or like they're very restricted on what they're allowed to say or they have to choose from like a multiple choice pool or something because they they won't actually type out to you you know what their thoughts are on it and they won't listen to what your uh, you know what you try to tell them or try to explain to them is is a real, uh, real frustrating experience dealing with Milwaukee's uh, warranty department. And I've, all my other tools, I've sent other tools in in the past, and I've never had an issue like this to where they just they refuse to hear you out. They refuse to accept that when they worked on this grease gun on six twenty two or twenty three, they were, is. Like they refused to accept the fact that maybe they had stripped it out, which I could understand why they would, you know, why they couldn't just take every single one and give them back. Like there is a line, there are going to be a group of people where they would stick a wrench on that and just heave ho it and, you know, do that exactly, just strip the threads. But then when it comes to a case like this one where I, literally didn't use this thing but maybe four tubes of grease in the year that it sat in the bottom drawer of my box after we went and got two of them that the shop shares it's I don't know it's it's real disheartening that Milwaukee would do somebody this way as you can see in there there are all the threads are gone down in there's some good threads still but up top we're that uh, hose actually engaged the threads. They're all gone in the upper part. So that's kind of my quick review. You can think whatever you want of it, but that's kind of my review of their service department, which sucks, man, to have to be like, you know, that, that's that's not going to fly with me. That shit ain't going to happen. The, you know, we were looking at their one-inch uh, uh lug wrench guns for pulling tires off of the semis we're not getting those now ain't no way we're not spending that kind of money here for the instance of let's say the anvil shears off on our one inch gun will while it's still in warranty and they say well you might have dropped it so we're not going to warranty it. you might have done this could have happened so you know your warranty is now null and void kind of thing so just be cautious when you're spending tons and tons of money on, you know, on tools like that. It's like, they, they make such a good tool, though, that, like, I'm a huge fan of Milwaukee's tools, but, God, man, that's going to ruin it for me right there. That's going to, it's going to make me have to say that this is going to be the last, you know, this is going to be my last batch. I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to have to do some research on uh, DeWalt, I guess. 
and see what they offer. I know their warranty is only a year, but if it's an honest year, it's going to be worth it. Because me paying the extra money for high name tools with a five year warranty and three years on their batteries, if they're going to if they're going to shut me down on it and not warranty my shit or my tools, pardon me, sorry for the language, but if they're not going to warranty the tools, then what's the point in having that extra warranty? So, yeah, and maybe just avoid their grease gun, I don't know. Because all these other tools, and they're great. They make some good stuff. And even the older stuff, the older high torque, like this one, that is a, it's a freaking powerhouse. Like, you know, let me just show it off right now. I'll sell tools for them, even though I'm pissed at them. I'll pick that one. That's on a half inch drive impact. These are put on with a one inch gun. So, they make some powerhouse stuff, some good high quality stuff, but man, I just can't quite get over that grease gun. That's going to kill me there. That's going to it's going to drive me away from their tools. It's going to drive our entire shop away from their tools just as we were starting to switch over from air up power and everything. You know, we went and bought brand new grease guns, which really sucks now. Because if those things start blowing up and they give me the run around on those like they did this one, you know, we ain't gonna, we definitely ain't gonna do no one inch guns. We definitely ain't doing three quarter guns. Our grinders, all our shop grinders have been either these or the big, the real big grinder. I don't know what, exactly what size that is, but I think it's a monster of a grinder. Throw this guy up there with it. This is their you know, standard angle grinder. So you can see what kind of body that one up there has on it. It is huge. You know, I'm not the only one in the shop either that has my own electric power tools. You know, especially Milwaukee's been getting, it's gaining traction here, but I don't know for how long. All right, so I guess we'll wrap it up by, uh, saying if anybody has any suggestions on maybe how to proceed with because I'm still emailing them on it regularly I, I'm not giving up on it. I'm gonna go every day until they block my ass but yeah there's them service numbers again the tool the tool is under warranty still it's you know I gave them the receipt with it So yeah, I mean, do what you will with that information, but it's just be careful with it. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, because I did, now I'm kicking myself for it. So again, if you have opinions on this, uh, or maybe an easy fix for it, a helicoil or something, I know it's a, the thread on it is a 7, get there, 7 16 fine thread. That's what the end of your hose is. So if you use a thread, a pitch gauge on this, a pitch gauge on a 716 fine thread, they're the same. So if you got any suggestions, let me know down in the comments. I will try to keep on top of them, but not make any promises. Or if you have a contact at Milwaukee, and you want to throw these numbers at them and see what their thoughts are on this hey man go for it may hell maybe I'll, I'll mail you the, if you can get them to agree to fix it I'll give it to you thanks again for watching hey so I'm gonna to try to read through these emails uh, you're going to have to bear with me. A bunch of them got missed and skipped because I'm pretty computer illiterate and I didn't realize that I should keep sending them in the same thread. So a lot of them are off in cyberspace somewhere and I can't find them. Anyways, this thread, I'm going to start it at uh, be November 15th. They responded to one of my emails with a couple of pictures, a picture of my 
grease gun with the stripped out hole where your hose goes and a picture of my receipt of when I bought it. And it says, uh, please advise the customer the tool was deemed non-warrantable by our technician due to the uh, gear case being stripped. Please see the photo below. My original email prior to this one, which I don't have right now, I'm not sure where it is. I didn't necessarily ask them what was wrong with it, I asked them more so why the warranty was denied. And they just come back with this same thing, kind of repetitively, until they finally sent the pictures, and I, that's when I said, please have someone, in the next email I said, please have someone call me, I left my phone number, that would be the third time I left my phone number with them. That's when I was starting to get heated and I had called Milwaukee, and that's when the lady informed me that their service department does not take or make outbound phone calls or inbound phone calls at all. Everything that their service department does is by email, according to her, which I find hard to believe, but whatever. Anyway, so uh, they don't respond back to that email of me saying, please have someone call me because they don't make calls. And they're not going to tell you that over email. They'd rather you just disappear and not ask any more questions. So my next email is... Uh, on 11:21, it says in regards to the message and pictures below could you please explain how this issue is not related to workmanship or material defect as i said in my original email this tool had the gear case replaced by milwaukee and then i give the service number and it's had maybe four tubes of grease run through it and now the hose port is stripped it's back again for a gear case issue and then i gave them their current uh service number and I said, this tool does not get used very often. This tool has only ever been worked on by Milwaukee and has been stored in its case in a locked toolbox and has never been dropped or misused. So I'm not sure why the warranty is being denied. If someone could please explain uh, how this defect was determined to be not covered by the warranty. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And again, I left my name, my email address, and my phone number all in you know, kind of like a sign-off thing you would do on an email if you use your email regularly. So then you, every time you email them to you, get an email back, like a generic thing saying, you know, dear customer, thank you for contacting Milwaukee Tool. We've received your email, and our support team will be in touch with you soon. You get that every time you send them an email, and you have to wait for them to send an email back. So I get an email back from Crystal Howell, a CX service support agent 11 that is how her uh, I guess you call it a tag is on the bottom of her email and it gives a, the 1-800 number for you know it's like 1-800 sawdust or whatever to actually call Milwaukee and uh, her email says hello thank you for your email to Milwaukee tool I do we do apologize for the inconvenience the office is closed today and then it gives their hours of operation and that's the only email I ever got from that one person, uh, Crystal Howell. So again, no answer on my question. So I, I copy and pasted the, or resent it or whatever the email that I just read to you a minute ago, a longer one. And then, you know, you get another generic message back. And then I got nothing. And so I sent it again. And then uh, I get another email from, uh, oh, she got her thing in a cursive font. I can't really read it. Lakeisha P, CX Service Support Agent, SSR2. And then again, it's got the 1-800 number and all that. And the service support at MilwaukeeTool.com email. This one says, good morning, thank you for your email to Milwaukee Tool. Per our repair facility, the hose and gear case are completely stripped out, and the denial will stand, but it doesn't really answer any of my questions. So I respond again, I understand that. What I would like to know is the reason behind the decision. How was this failure determined to not be material or workmanship related? when the gear case hose were installed by Milwaukee the last time I sent it in for repair. Then you get another generic email back saying, you know, that they got your email and they'll look at it. 
and I didn't get a response. So that was so I sent the one I just read to you on 11:27. No response. So I sent the same message again on 12:1, December 1st, with no uh, repair back or reply back. And so, yeah, I guess I'm, that's where I'm at now. Here it is, December 1st. Now, this started back in October. I think I mailed that thing out, like, October 20th or somewhere between the 20th and 25th. And, yeah, so that's kind of where, where I'm at with that thing. Let's see if I can find the mother emails real quick. It's this guy. Let's see. Oh, hey, I found my uh, original thread just now. So the very first email was 1114. It looks like. I don't know. I, I say I emailed them well before that. So, the initial email says, I have called Milwaukee several times the last couple weeks and have, had, have not been able to get an answer from them regarding my grease gun. Could someone from the service department please call me? Listed above are the service orders I'm having an issue with. Thank you. And again, I leave my name, my email address, my phone number, and the service order numbers. And you get an email. That's a generic email. And I get an email from the Crystal Howell again, CX Service Support Agent 11. It says, hello, thank you for your email. We do apologize for the inconvenience this may have caused. On order, and then they give me my current service order number. The item was denied warranty. The LMR cost will not exceed $140. We have sent pictures and reason from our factory trained technician on on service order number SV the old service number it was covered under the warranty so that does that one I don't really care for that email they they've never given me reason all they've said is it's stripped out so I guess I understand it's stripped out why was the warranty denied okay it's stripped out yeah but when that gear case was just put on by Milwaukee and sent back to me and then like a year later I'm having issues with it and I open it up and everything's all fucked up in there pardon my French that's, that's where I kind of got frustrated I think after this email yeah, this is the one where I started a new thread right there and reply to the one where they sent the pictures instead Yeah, anybody got any suggestions on how to talk to these people because they don't like they, they don't want to communicate from department to department there either. It seems like like I don't think they actually talk between their uh, customer service people and their service department. I wonder if they have the, kind of like the same rule they do for people like you know for customers like they're not allowed to call each other or something. Anyway, if anybody has any input on this or any, I guess, way to get a hold of them, way way to get a hold of somebody there that's competent enough to answer a question, it's, just, it's one question. I've, I've been really nice to everybody I talk to on the phone. I don't believe in being rude to people because that doesn't get you anywhere, like especially with me. If you're going to come in here to my shop and you're going to try to boss me around or be rude to me, you're, you know, you're back out the door where you came. You can go and figure it out on your own. So I try to always keep that in mind, especially when I'm dealing with people on the phone. It's really easy to get you yell at people on the phone. But I do everything I can not to do that. So far, I've been extremely patient with everybody at Milwaukee. I've not cussed or sworn at anybody at Milwaukee. I haven't said anything terribly bad about them. 
other than you know like hey can i can i talk to somebody who can answer this and most of the time you get told no so if you have a line of reason with milwaukee tools let me know thanks for watching